like short rise. which were raised with me before the short adjournment, the, the list of members of the IAG were going to have to email them to you as they're, because they're quite long. Um, uh, I haven't intended to email them, but I will just send an email by the evening. Um, on the question, on the question of um, retention or, um, retention periods for police records. There is some evidence in the uh, supplementary bundle, which was before the judge below, um, from, from Mr. Tucker, uh, page 102 of the supplementary bundle. Turning then to the, uh, the course of my submissions, I, I was dealing with the, um, the implications for the individual of the categorisation of a complaint uh, uh, under the hate uh, 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 categorisation uh, pursuant to the guidance. Um, and at paragraph 177 of the judgment below, the learned judge uh, accepted um, my learned junior's submission that while the overall information obtained from the recording is important to policing, the mere recording and I emphasise mere of an incident of itself has no real consequence for the individual such as the claimant. He's pausing there. What, what he perhaps, perhaps might have said was the mere categorisation of a recorded incident has no real consequence for the individual such as the claimant. The evidence of Mr Giannazzi and Mr Williams, both of which you have in the supplementary bundle, uh, is that recording is primarily an administrative process to build an intelligence picture based on statistics. The intelligence picture could include finding that an incident may be part of a jigsaw suggesting criminal activity. Mr. Ginazzi explains that the guidance does not mandate the police to take any form of action in response to a report of a non-criminal hate incident. As a result, where the police do decide to take any action following the recording of an incident and its categorization line, I suppose, this is carried out on the basis of an operational decision by the police exercising their common law and statutory powers. Where that decision is taken, the guidance itself does not require a particular response and expressly states that this proportion of action should not be taken. On this evidence, I conclude there's no real risk of any further consequences for the claimant's rights arising from the mere recording of history and pursuant to the guidance. Now, we, we adopt 
and I'd emphasise the distinction drawn by the judge between the mere recording or categorisation, as we've described it, and any operational decisions which are taken by the police uh, thereafter. The operational um, decisions may, of course, contribute to some degree of stigmatisation, um, um, depending upon how the investigation is conducted, what findings are made, uh, and so forth. But these are all separate operational matters which are not mandated by, by the guidance. Um, indeed, it's difficult to see how the mere categorisation of a record on the police local information system as a uh, under under the hate qualifier could could stigmatize the individual when there's no reason for them to become aware of it unless further action is taken so so as as the judge explained the primary purpose of holding these records is uh, and for the and for the categorization is the administrative intelligence Purposes, uh, which are, which I've just read out in, in, in 177, and which are explained in Mr. Giannazzi's um, statement. But nobody will know um, unless the police take further operational decisions, or indeed, if, uh, in, in, in ordinary course, the mere categorization does not impact upon the individual. They are, it is un, un, unlikely to come to their attention unless unless further steps are taken by the, by the police to investigate or in, in some other way. So we say that once, once that is understood, once the limited effect of the categorization is understood, um, there really is no basis for the supposed chilling effect and as I uh, submitted before the short adjournment, there is absolutely no basis in the decided authorities for a step of this nature to be held to be an interference with freedom of expression. Now, the claimant's best case on this, I'm sure no Mr. Armitage as I do, he scoured the, the Strasbourg authority. And the best case which the claimant was able to come up with before the learned judge is that at paragraph 178 of the judgment, which is a Lithuanian case. Um, where, where an administrative penalty had been imposed and a publication had been confiscated under the relevant provisions of Lithuanian law. And that was held to be an interference with the publisher's Article 10 rights. Now, you've, you've got no other authorities, no, nothing to add to what the claimant said to the learned judge, and he, he, he distinguished, and rightly so, the Lithuanian authority. You have nothing on which to anchor a finding of interference with freedom of expression in the way of authority. And so far as the evidence is concerned, well, of course, you're, you're concerned with the with the, the impact of the guidance across the board, which is of, as I submitted at the outset, of some relevance to the risks that the guidance may pose as to what happened in this particular case. But in this particular case, that we know that there was disproportionate action by the Humberside police taken by way of operational decision after the initial, after the initial categorization. Um, Mr. Can I just ask uh, uh, just a yeah, question of, uh, in relation to what happened below? Um, obviously, the second de defendant was represented separately. Uh, what 
did you say, if anything, about uh, their case on their actions, or was it just dealt with in two discrete boxes? The, the guidance on the one hand, and the and the um, uh, its application or the operational side of it, as you would call it, on the other. Did the did the second defendant say that it was part of its? It was acting in accordance with the guidance. Must have done, presumably. Did you? Have, did you? Did your your um, client take a take a stance on that? Let me, it's fair. It's fair to say. I think that we that we were um, supportive of, or, or at least not 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 in opposition to the to the second defendant. But this, I'm sorry, I, I didn't appear in the court. So you know, but the, the skeleton argument which we filed is in is in the core bundle at 385. Um, we were primarily concerned um, with the uh, with, with with the guidance. If one does pick up some flavour from the from the judgment of the degree of common ground between the between the um, between the parties, and I'm I, I'm just going to turn around. To my, it's my junior did it. Did it. Mr. Alderman has, has corrected me, although um, he, he's, he, his recollection, I mean, it, it should be apparent from the skeletons, that, that, that uh, we didn't take a, a positive stance on the legality of, of Humberside's actions, but nor did we, nor did we um, seek to, to criticise them. So I, so I think the, the depiction as um, two, two separate Well, I, I, I'm sorry to interject there. Uh, that, that really, uh, I know my learned friend wasn't in the court below, and I, I, I was. Um, the reality is, the College of Policing supported Humberside 100%, and actually, in truth, made most of the running for it. And that's reflected in the judge's judgment. And if you look at the uh, skeleton description, um, you can see that that was the case. Well, then, 156 of the skeleton argument concludes by uh, saying that the first defendant submits Humberside's actions did not infringe Article 10 and in any event do not call the policy into question. That's exactly the paragraph I've got. I'm uh, so sorry. But, but no, no, you, you, you're one step ahead of me. Um, yes, and as I say, they did most of the running, in fact, um, in, in, in the court. Or uh, the, the other two issues. Yes. No, I'm, I'm grateful for the reference to 156. Uh, I think one, one does... Um, they have to bear in mind um, what actions of Humberside that we were concerned with, and we were concerned with their um, recording and categorisation, not the not the you know the visiting of Mr. Miller or the threat of criminal prosecution. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I must uh, also interject there uh, uh, as well. Whether again, I know my learned friend wasn't um, in 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 court, in the court below, but the College of Policing supported everything that Humberside Police did, including the post. I think, well, I think we can leave it there. We can have a look at the documents and make our own minds up. Thank you. Right. Um, so, in insofar as the evidence of Mr. Miller and his wife is relevant to the challenge that remains, um, one one does have to look at it very much in the in in the context that they they were concerned largely with the with the post. Categorization and post recording um, um, actions of the police. But also, there is in, in my submission there's simply a failure to understand uh, what the effect of the guidance uh, was. And I, I, I don't criticise Mr. 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 Miller's evidence for, for um, um, the way in which he described how, how he felt as a result of the events overall. But there isn't a focus on what we say is actually the effect of the guidance and what that uh, uh, caused uh, as opposed to um, the other aspect of the, of the case. Um, um, and there is
is no there is no wider evidence. You you have no wider evidence about chilling effect um, uh, beyond um, um, beyond the evidence uh, um, for in, in sickle for Mr. Miller's particular um, circumstances. Um, So, what about the evidence of Catherine Stocker? Is it Justice Stocker? Yes, you you, you have evidence uh, in relation to um, the the particular issue on which he was um, tweeting, and uh, and putting into context his 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 put into context his his mm. particular comments, um, but in terms of uh, in terms of um, the effect of the guidance more broadly, which is what we're, we're concerned with now. The, the evidence understandably focused on, on Mr. Miller's particular case and his particular concerns. of the case on interference um, is the um, is the argument in relation to enhanced criminal record check disclosure. I think we, we've covered that ground substantially already, but uh, we, we do uh, we, the judge disagreed with us as, as to whether it was conceivable that the information information accorded in relation to Mr. Miller could be disclosed on a, on a, on a future enhanced criminal records um, certificate. Um, he then found um, that, that that was a separate matter which was, which was constrained by the safeguard that I, that I have described. And of course, once you appreciate that the complaint against Mr. Miller would have been recorded in any event and will be on the local police system in any event should he come to apply to be a carer for transgender children. Um, it is only the additional factor of the flag which uh, could conceivably amount to an interference with, with freedom of expression and the idea that, that, that a police force is going to disclose something simply because it has the flag without looking at the substance of the information, well that, well that, that would be entirely contrary to the, to the various protocols and safeguards that, that exist. So in relation to the prescribed by law element, I assume I'm with me on interference, then we get into prescribed by law. Um, what is alleged is that um, paragraph 6.3 of the guidance interferes with freedom of expression, and the question is whether that interference, whether paragraph 6.3 of the guidance has a sufficient basis in law, in law as in as interpreted through the Strasbourg jurisprudence and the answer to that question is in CAT uh, between paragraph 7 and 17 and the conclusion in paragraph 17 that I showed you earlier on that the retention of data in police information systems in the UK is in accordance with the law based on well established common law powers, data protection act, various codes of practice and guidance. Now um, that case was concerned with the retention of data, but a fortiori, the recording of information on police systems in the first place is in accordance with the law, and a fortiori further, and what paragraph 6.3 of the guidance actually does, the categorisation 
of information which the police have recorded must also be in accordance with the law on the, on the authority of Pat. It is plainly foreseeable in the light of the legal framework which exists, common law, the DPA, the various codes of practice, that the police will categorise uh, uh, and organise the incidents that they record um, and that one of those categories will be eight incidents. Now, the claimant doesn't seek to distinguish cats, doesn't, doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't invite you to reach any different conclusion from that which was reached in cat. What the claimant does is to direct his fire at a different question, and we say at the wrong question. What the claimant does is to say that paragraph 6.3 is not in accordance with the law because it's too broad, because, because perception-based recording is, is, too, is too broad. But that is a proportionality complaint. That is a complaint that, although the guide does have a It has a disproportionate effect on freedom of expression, as it said, because of the criteria which are adopted for categorization. Of course, the, the, the issues may have been different when the complaint was that Humberside Police had applied the guidance in a manner which breached Article 10 rights, and then one was looking at whether the actions of Humberside were prescribed by law, but we're looking at the guidance. Now, even if I, I accept uh, Mr. Weiser's worldview and we, and, we, and we look at the breadth of the, of the guidance it, itself, of paragraph 6.3 um, itself, there are two, two preliminary points that I would make relation to that. The first is um, the principle of relativity um, as identified by the Court of Appeal in the Bridges case, uh, page 1675 of the Authorities Bundle.
um, and you can contrast the Akcham case, the Turkish case that Mr. Wise uh, referred to, where the circumstances were that the, the, the academic faced a serious risk of criminal prosecution. Not somebody had applied a qualifier to a record held about him in the local police station, but he faced being prosecuted. And, and the other preliminary point in terms of responding to my learned friend's arguments is that, is that one does have to bear in mind the purpose of the of, of the guidance. It is pitched at a, at a high level. It covers both hate crimes and hate incidents of all descriptions. It is, it is uh, supposed to be applicable to and to be had regard to by all, all uh, police forces in, in England and Wales. Um, it, is, it is not a very lengthy document. Um, it is not to be Forth. It, it has limited, limited purposes, and it does not exclude a whole range of other uh, matters and factors which the police would ordinarily have regard to. Um, we then refer to uh, we then refer to paragraph sixty-six of our skeleton argument, which does address the case as Mr. Wise puts it, uh, the breadth of the. And we support and adopt the findings of the judge in paragraph 196 onwards of his, of his judgment. Um, we, we say that the, the principle of categorization based on complainant perception, subject to constraints, is perfectly clear. Far from creating too much discretion on the part of the police, which is what I understand from uh, Mr. Wise's complaints, the purpose and effect of paragraph 6.3 is to remove most of the element of judgment which had in the past caused police not to categorise. are express controls on how categorization will operate, 1.2.4 or 1.2.5, and the overarching public law constraints recognized by the judge. And we don't accept that there is any real doubt as to when conduct is liable to be categorized as a hate incident, i.e. based on complainant perception, but nor does the guidance provide for every eventuality, and it doesn't have to. And that's paragraph 72 of our skeleton argument. So if if we if we are if we get beyond the Article 10 interference. What this case is then really about is proportionality. Is, is the guidance too broad, lacking in safeguards, um, prescribed by law? It's, 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 it's not uh, not a proper understanding uh, of the statute. On. Um, Proportionality. Then, um, the first question is the matter of approach uh, to the appeal, which is our paragraph seventy-eight and seventy-nine in Lord Carnworth um, in the AR case, and we we stand by uh, our reliance upon his reasoning. What the 
what the claimant must show is an identifiable flaw in the judge's reasoning, such as a gap in logic, a lack of consistency, or a failure to take account of some material factor which undermines the cogency of the conclusion. And a, a criticism, a mere criticism of the judge's evaluative judgment, uh, for example, on the question of the degree of interference, is not, uh, is not sufficient in our, in our submission. Um, the proportionality issue. Can I just um, ask a question about that? I mean, it, that's sort of right. So then the question would be what approach could be taken to proportionality? Um, or what approach could then be taken to the principle of relativity, I should say? Same, the, the, the so you say it doesn't. You, you, if once you've accepted that the judge was entitled to come to the conclusion that he did on the level of interference, then it has to factor in in the same way as regards his approach to the relativity question. Yes, that what is it, it, what, is it, 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 what is required to by way of justification for the interference is in inverse proportion to the. Is, is in is in proportion to the extent of the interference, and if there is a low level of interference, as there would be here, then then what the court ought to require by way of justification is, is equally at a at a low level in the context of freedom of expression. And, and as I said, if the judge says there's no interference, which this judge did, that's a different that's yes. a different question. Yes. Because so, then he hasn't weighed it. Well. Lady, we submit that he did weigh it because what he did was to was yes to find that there was no interference, but then to go on to consider proportionality as if he was on the on the footing that he was wrong about low level interference. Well, that's, quite, that's quite an interesting intellectual exercise because I mean, how can he gauge? I mean, he's he's he then goes on to say, well, there is an interference; it's marginal. Well, he would say that because he'd already concluded that it was there was no interference. So, so he couldn't. I mean, he didn't go on to say, "Well, if I'm wrong about the interference, and it's a serious interference, I would nonetheless hold." He, he effectively still discounted of the uh, degree of interference. Well, he he did, I and mean, maybe he was. That was, we submit, an, an, an intellectually um, perfectly um, understandable and sensible thing to do. What he, what he does when he's considering is there an interference, is he, he says, well, I, 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 I analyse what the effect of all this is on, on the claimant, and in, in my judgment that doesn't surpass the threshold, and it's, it's, not, it's not every, um, uh, not every which will surpass the threshold. But if I'm wrong about that, and we are over the threshold, uh, so I do have to consider proportionality, um, um, I, I can't then ignore that, that uh, although we're over the threshold, we're still at the relatively low end. Um, but, my lady, on, on any view, what has happened in, in, in Mr. Miller's case, and what concerns the just Mr. Miller's case, but on any view, categorization as a hate incident, um, quite separate from anything that may follow thereafter in any particular case, categorization cannot be a serious interference with freedom of expression. And, and one, one only has to, to survey the limited authorities you have in the bundle on this. We're not talking about criminal prosecutions, we're not talking about penalties or sanctions of any sort, um, we're simply talking about police record keeping primarily for intelligence purposes, as the judge, as the judge held. Um, so on, on any view um, in our submission there can
cannot be an error of principle or a flaw in the judge's in the judge's logic in proceeding on the basis that this was a a low level interference. Um, I, I missed, Mr. Wise criticised paragraph two hundred twenty six of the judgment. Um, the judge saying that that the level of interference for freedom of expression by the guidance is low, and then Mr. Wise says, but, but he didn't explain why, um, because he, he 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 had explained why in his earlier in the in the earlier part of the judgment. Uh, um, paragraph 175 onwards, uh, where where he's considering whether there is an interference at all, um, and he he says at 228, um, as I've said in the, in the second sentence, the recording of non-crime hate incidents barely encroaches on freedom of expression if it does so at all, um, and. He, 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 he was concerned with the individual facts of Mr. Miller's case to a much greater extent than you are. And he was, he was aware in Mr. Miller's case that far from Mr. Miller being um, discouraged or dissuaded from, from stating his views, um, um, what, what happened with the Humberside, the Humberside police uh, encouraged him to redouble his efforts. And there was no, no, no evidence at all, even on the particular facts of, of Mr. Miller's case that Humberside's actions, and let alone the mere categorization, had, had, had any um, um, chilling effect on, on Mr. Miller's conduct. Is it fair to say, Mr. Coppel, that the, the judge was focusing mostly, as you say, on the particular facts of Mr. Miller's case and the micro, rather than the macro, the chilling effect, which he does on at 176, but he doesn't appear to have been considering the wider issue which we've been debating here as to the, the potentially chilling effect of having a database which records these sorts of tweets and public comments and labels them as suspects and, and so on. And doesn't get the impression from the judgment he's looking at that wider issue in, in, as regards interference. It's not just with Mr. Miller, but it's the wider yes. context. Yes. Well, I mean, first of all, it's not the guidance that tells the police to record um, mm -hmm. incidents in that way. You, you know my submission on 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 that. Um, he is undoubtedly focusing on on Mr. Miller's particular case. Um, Part, partly because there was the challenge to Humberside and, and that was the evidentiary focus of the material before him. Partly also because Mr. Mr. Miller's argument on the, on the guidance is this is unlawful because look what can happen in um, this most um, pressing of situations where somebody is commenting on a matter of social controversy. And so so it, it was. It was. So the so the, the argument was: you know, this is the best case, really, of 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 interference. Um, um, nobody was saying that the police shouldn't record a, a, a racist uh, racist abuse in the street, or 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 you know anything at the at the at the more serious end of the spectrum. This this was this was said to be the best the best case as to. I may not have expressed, but you mentioned the fact that the judge said it was low level, but was he really considering the, the widespread chilling effect that it might have in his judgment? Well, um, I don't. Well, he did, he did, he doesn't um, um, go go much beyond. Considering interference, I, 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 I accept that. Um, but the principle, or the, the the reasoning in relation to Mr. Miller's case, 
is more widely applicable um, when you understand this is just recording or categorization. Anything that's done thereafter is an operational um, matter for the police, which is different. Um, that applies um, across the board. Um, and I would, I would uh, the, the, the reasoning of the judge is this is the, the guidance itself wouldn't have a, 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 a chilling effect because all that it is doing is uh, recording or categorizing and uh, what the police choose to do thereafter. Well, that might have a chilling effect in a particular well, case. Well, to be fair, the judge says in 176. Second sentence. I recognise the argument the mere act of recording speech may have a chilling effect on the speaker's right to freedom of expression. Yes, but then the mere recording without more. And, and, and that's, that, that, that's, that's, I mean, that, that's his reasoning in Mr Miller's case and applicable more widely is this is just about recording. And in fact, mm -hmm. it's just about categorisation. But he then says it's too remote for any consequence. Yes. Really? Yes. But well, look, that is absolutely right. It is the categorization does not in itself produce any consequences at all. It, it it provides useful information for the police for reasons which we can see, and it may or may not be taken further and lead to additional operational decisions. But that's a, those are a different matter. It's not the it's, it's not the guidance that tells that tells the police how to investigate how to. What findings to make, how to record on their contents. Uh, can I just ask something, um, Mr. Koppel, uh, that sort of follows on from that? In a world without the guidance, you said that this complaint from uh, this member of the public would have been recorded in any event. Yes. What would it have been recorded as? It would have been recorded as an incident. An incident. What? Uh, I mean, what? Of what? And and how would it have been searchable? So, um, if we look at the NSIR, one seven seven one. One seven seven. Oh, sorry. Uh, one seven seven. Definition uh, of an incident. Um, there are elsewhere in this document, but not in the bundle, um, minimum standards for what needs to be recorded in relation to an incident. Uh, but again, we, we, can, we can provide as may be, but, but things like the, the, the date and time of the, of the complaint, the substance of the complaint, the person complained against. Um, those, those, those sorts of things are in, are in there uh, elsewhere in this, in this document. Um, so the incident goes on the same database. It's simply, at this stage, it doesn't have the flag, the qualifier attached to it that it is a hate incident. There are other flags, other qualifiers, be added, uh, but and what purpose would it serve recording the incident? So, set somebody in a member of the public contacts the police and says, "I've seen a tweet on on Twitter that I don't like, and it's caused me to feel very upset." That would be recorded with the date and time. For what purpose? Well, um, the the it's it's the it's the purposes which are. Set out in the in the in the context of of hate incidents in the in the, in the guidance that that kind of information may be relied upon by the police to take um, further action uh, either either once recorded or 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 if, if if something else comes in which is relevant or something's already on the system in relation to to the to the individuals. Um, uh, 
um, it is it serves a, a record without the hate qualifier serves exactly the same purpose in policing terms. Sorry, I'm not saying purpose, but it, it, it serves similar purposes in policing terms as as if the hate qualifier were added. What the hate qualifier does is the reason set out in the guidance is to is to give the police particular intelligence and uh, assist their in our analysis issues but there's nothing to say that once you've added the hate qualifier you must then do X you must then investigate or you must then go and speak to to all the matter of of, of judgment for the Assist if we provided you with the with the the extract which tells the police what to record. Thank you. Well, maybe this this is really this is really fundamental to to my point about maintaining a proper focus on what the impact of the guidance actually is, and it's really much more limited than. Further points my learned friend made on proportionality. He he criticised um, the judge's reference to Article 17 um, and the limited protection afforded to to hate. Um, but that was entirely uh, fair and correct reference to make when the issue was the the proportionality of the guidance as a whole, uh, and the, and the guidance does does um, um, apply to hate speech in the in the proper and uh, most extreme term. The judge wasn't saying, and we know he wasn't saying that Mr. Miller's speech was hate speech because we know we know the judge had had uh, serious concerns as to whether it was properly recordable at all um, but if you're if you're looking at the proportionality of the guidance as a whole across the board then that is a, a material consideration Friend, I think the final point that he made that I want to specifically address is that in relation to safeguards, um, as he criticised the judge's um, reliance on the safeguards that are in, in place, um, um, that's 230. such as the, the, the uh, public law constraints, the DPA, the, the, uh, the other policies such as the NSIR, and then the limitations on disclosure. Considerations take into account in balancing uh, any interference with the with the, uh, the individual right of freedom of expression with the with 
the important objectives pursued by the by the particular section based cordon. Um, Mr. Wise's point this morning was well there can't be any safeguards if you don't know uh, that your that the complaint against you has been flagged as a hate incident. Well um, um, if you don't know about it and no further action is taken then it's difficult to see what there needs to be safeguards against uh, because there is simply no uh, concrete effect on the, on, the, on the individual. It is only if further action is contemplated that the, the, uh, many of the safeguards that the judge uh, referred to um, um, become applicable. But there is, in any event, a safeguard of the right of subject access to find out what what data the police hold about you, uh, to ask that data be deleted, um, um, all under the rubric of the data protection laws. So finally on proportionality and really the final point I wanted to make in my submissions. Um, this, this claim is not, in truth, a root and branch challenge to the guidance, even to paragraph 6.3 of the guidance and to the principles on which it is based. This challenge is to how the guidance may play out in the particular context of individuals making contributions, uh, public statements on matters of social controversy. Um, now, the judge found, and we, 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 we don't seek to challenge, we acknowledge the very serious concerns about how Humberside Police acted in this case, how they, how they uh, uh, treated the claimant in this case. But we do urge the court to exercise caution in terms of, of undermining uh, uh, or requiring uh, iteration to the, to the guidance across the board. Um, um, given the given the range of circumstances that it applies to, in the particular context that this case is concerned with, the new guidance, which is is the extent to which police forces are applying, does we say take considerable steps towards ensuring that there is proper restraint exercised in the face of such as made by Ms. B in this case. And can I just run through those before I sit down? I, I know I've shown you the new guidance already, but I just need to run through the safeguards that I'm referring to, beginning on 261 of the supplementary And on 261, um, you have the, um, the text under any other person, which is uh, carried, carried on from 1.2.4 the, of the previous guidance. Uh, don't don't uh, uh, record an incident if based on perception of a person or group who has no knowledge the victim crime area, who may be responding to media or internet stories, or who is reporting for a political or similar motive. So if we're, if we're talking about people uh, uh, being, being, uh, making complaints about others' contributions to a political debate, 
there is a specific warning, as there was in the previous guidance, but a specific constraint um, um, in, that, in that regard. I'm so, sorry, I missed where you were reading. So from. under any other person on 261, yeah. um, um, towards the end, it says any, uh, an incident should not be recorded. And towards the end of the second line, it's based on the perception of a person who is reporting for a political or similar motive. Do you see that one already? Yeah. Um, Often not an easy task for the police to undertake. Well, uh, I mean, it, looking at the reality, I mean, we don't have windows into people's souls. It's not an easy issue to to resolve. But, but the, the way the way up we submit the court ought to reason this is there are good reasons for perception based recording. Mm -hmm. There are particular circumstances, as highlighted by this case, where difficult questions may arise um, as to what should be um, recorded, what should be categorised as, as, as a hate incident and what shouldn't. But the guidance does make efforts, which we say significant efforts, to constrain the actions of the police in those difficult areas and in the particular difficult area that you're concerned with. It doesn't cease to be a difficult area. And I, 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 I accept that there may be um, difficult judgments for, for for police to take in some in some cases, but in in terms of guidance, they are directed to consider the very matter which the claimant says he's concerned about, which is which is um, the stifling of, of political comment. Did, did the judge consider the new guidance? I mean, I think it's mentioned, but I don't think he addressed it. Did he? No. No, he didn't. Um, he he had the draft, I understand, uh, uh, just before the hearing started. But oh, I'm sorry, I think the, the the new draft guidance came out the day before the hearing started. But he didn't he didn't have a go at it, I understand, at the hearing. But in terms of, I mean, he he had he had 1.2.4 of the old guidance, which is similar to the to the words I've been reading you. Um, and in terms of relief. In this case, now that now that we're concerned just with the guidance, you will have to to consider um, uh, even if you if you agree with my learned friend about the old guidance, um, what relief can should be granted in relation to the old guidance as it's no longer in in, in force. Um, we certainly will be saying the, you you may make 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 judgments about it, make declarations about it, but quashing it. And in terms of what you should do on remedy, we will say you should have regards to to the to the current uh, guidance and what you should do. Mr. Coffey, you said just now that this case, particular case, raised issues, um, but in a sense, it, the impression was quite rare. But, but don't we have to consider the matter in a broader context? And for instance, in Nagoli, which is in the bundle, we had to deal with a student who posted some thing on Facebook in a chat room about homosexuality, which he said was a sin and wicked, and quoted passages from the Bible. And he was then reported anonymously by somebody who was by it, and then disciplined so on. But isn't that a, another example of how potentially the stifling issue is a, is a much broader problem? If, first of all, would you say in that case that was something that, that might well be recorded and categorized under your guidance? Well, Lord, I certainly I, I accept that that uh, those sorts of facts could could raise difficult um, questions. Um, I've got, I'm going through the different 
qualifications on the on the on the guidance and the different um, safeguards which are now there to be applied in, in, in including it in that sort of case. Yeah, I follow that. I was just dealing with your submission that this is a bit of a rare case, and that Nagoli, which is at one four three seven of the bundle, is is another example of how there are debates about homosexuality, abortion, trans. Etc. Yes, formal. Well, I, I, I'm not saying this is the only uh, type of difficult case. I, I'm, I, I, I characterise this case as one that deals with um, public comments on on matters of social controversy, uh, which clearly could, could could go beyond the trans rights uh, um, situation. Um, so no, I, I, I'm not seeking to minimise the problems down to this, down to this instance. Uh, uh, but equally, um, um, homophobic hate crimes and hate incidents are a real problem, um, um, and there is real, uh, a real a real necessity for concerted police action um, um, against that problem. Um, so. So one does have to be careful about requiring the line to be drawn too far back from where it where it currently is, bearing in mind that we're only talking about categorisation. What you found problematic in Nagoli was not some uh, somebody adding a, a comment to his record, but that he was actually disciplined uh, and the way that he was treated by the, by the authorities in that case. So that, that's a that is a completely different matter from the from the guidance. So I was on, I think, uh, 261 of the supplementary bundle, and I then needed to go to 271, um, where you've got um, complaints against police action at the bottom of the page, which again is a, a carryover from um, the earlier version, and we've we will be providing you with a track change uh, document. Uh, but the point here is some groups or individuals may try to challenge the police service using complaints or litigation against the police response, actions or inactions, to hate crime or non-crime hate incident allegations. They may allege political bias or disproportionate infringement of human rights. It is important that all police actions are proportionate, taking into account human rights reflect national and local policy and that decision making is appropriate. Investigating officers should seek the advice of senior colleagues where they suspect a complaint may be vexatious or politically motivated. Particular care is necessary to ensure that Article 10 rights to freedom of speech are not infringed beyond that permitted by law. Now, this, this isn't a very detailed and uh, legalistic analysis, but, but telling, telling the police to Consider the uh, freedom of speech implications of their actions is is right and and appropriate to address the sorts of issues that this claim raises. And going over the page to two seven two, um, um, there is a, a specific reference and a and a, a link through to the Miller judgment at first instance. On two seven three, um, three paragraphs down. Um, so I'm sorry, two, three paragraphs down. There may be an overlap between a perceived non-crime hate incident. Just looking at what it says about um, Miller. Two seven two. Yes. Colleges operational hate guide, crime guidance is found to be lawful. It's the recording of non hate, non crime hate incidents. The guidance requires recording of allegations of hate crime and non crime incidents based on the perception of the victim. It says it's required. The judgment drew attention to this section in the guidance. Of factors that might make recording unnecessary. 
So it's specifically drawing attention to the limits on the principle of perception-based recording, which the judge identified. So, so we'll put a link to the judgment itself. But, we'll, but it's, 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 it sets out the principle of perception-based recording and then emphasizes the limitation on that um, in the first instance judgment. I'm sure one, one, if one was writing a, a, a legal treatise in relation to first instance judgment, one might pose it slightly differently. But this is high level guidance to, to, to police officers and to police forces who will have their own local policies and local procedures based on it. And, and in the real world, how does this square with your statement in your skeleton argument at 57C? that the volume of messages is so large that it is impossible in practice for police to investigate and make decisions on motives. How do these safeguards, which do require investigation into the motives of the complainant, operate when there are so many messages, or so many complaints, rather? Well, um, some, of, some of the or to, to, to some extent the safeguards can be applied or the restrictions can be applied without a uh, detailed um, investigation. Um, um, but really, I, 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 can't, I can't get away, get away from the fact that, that there, is, there are very high volumes of, 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 um, um, of complaints. We, but, but you're sort of trying to have your cake and eat it, aren't you? Because the answer to Mr. Wise's submission that it could be recorded as a complaint until investigated is, well, there are too many. We can't possibly investigate. But you're now seeking to rely on the prospect of investigation after the event. Yeah, I haven't expressed myself very clearly, but it, see, it seems to me that you're, you're trying to have your cake and eat it, Mr. Unfair. Um, I always, always seek to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but, but I think the answer that I've given is I think I've maybe given it already is that take take the take the the qualification around political motivation. Um, now that it may not require any significant investigation to be able. To say, well, I've I've complaint from a trans person who doesn't like what um, this uh, gender critical um, um, academic is is saying. That looks to me uh, quite political. I'm going uh, to without having to go and interview the complainant or the academic. Um, so really, I, you're you're right of course, uh, some, 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 some safeguards uh, will, will require more thought and some may require um, some investigation, but to a large extent this is supposed to be uh, to be guidance applied at the point of recording. So I think I was on 273, and uh, yes, the third paragraph down, there may be an overlap between the perceived non trans hate incident and the legitimate exercise of rights and freedoms conferred by the Human Rights Act. Police officers and staff responding to a non crime hate incident must remember they have limited enforcement powers. Um, a disproportionate response and adverse impact on either the individual's human rights, e.g. by making speech, all our levels of hostility and tension in society is similar. Um, police, every police responder must determine for themselves the appropriate response, so every response must be in accordance with the law and be proportionate. Um, and the, the proportionate response uh, is emphasized at the bottom of the page uh, as well, and goes over on to 270. 
four, where there is also a, a section on contact strategy, which which also has been informed by by the the actions of, of IPCI in the, in this case. Um, so this guidance does take considerable steps we would submit to addressing the problems raised in a case such as we are concerned with, such as that of, of Mr Mitler, but without significantly compromising the important principle of perception-based based reporting. That is a balance which has been struck, has been a, attempted to be struck by the college. There is a, a margin of discretion, of course, I haven't shown you the, the detailed clauses on that, there is of course a margin of, of discretion in that, and we would submit that the, that the balance in this difficult area has been struck in an appropriate place as the College has. guidance out and perhaps deal with this point uh, first and then go back to one of the earlier points. Uh, the point that I think he was seeking to make was that uh, in the light of the judgment of the High Court in this case, there have been amendments to this new guidance, uh, which is still up for consultation at the time of the, uh, the hearing in the High, High Court, uh, to take account of the um, particular problems that arose, uh, issues that arose from from. From, from, from Mr. Miller's case. Um, my learning friend has failed to point the court to uh, anything that, uh, that clarifies uh, the guidance, um, the, the earlier guidance, uh, that, to take uh, into account his case. And indeed, what seems to have happened is that the College of Policing seems to have been emboldened by the judgment below, because I can take the court while we still have it out to page 274, the only su bit of substance that I was able to um, ascertain that, 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 that's changed in the guidance, and I, I may be wrong, um, and we'll, I look forward to, to seeing the track change um, version in due course, but can I take the court to example three at the bottom of page 274? Because you see, we're now, now um, emboldened by the judgment of the High Court, the College of Policing are now bringing this into the schools. So we've now got this acting on in, in the school classroom and the um, school playground. So a child who says something derogatory at school can now have recorded, should have a reco uh, an incident recorded against them as a non-crime hate incident. I mean, really, this is the exact opposite of what my learning friend is contending. Thing. It gets worse, not better. That's not constraints or, 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 or um, sensible or responsible balancing of, of the respective rights. It's entrenching um, the errors that were already apparent from the earlier guidance. And the court might, uh, might wish to know, I understand, I'm not involved with it, but I understand there are proceedings extant about the extent to which this guidance affects uh, school, uh, uh, school children. So, um, a very worrying development indeed, we, uh, 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 we would uh, 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 suggest. These, uh, of course, were set out under, under my learned friend's heading, uh, consider considerable restraints being in the new guidance, is the way that my learned friend put it. We, haven't, we weren't pointed to one restraint whatsoever that's been put into the new guidance as a result of the judgment of the court below, and as we see, actually, it is. Um, got more extensive. Wanted to make that point while we still have the new guidance out uh, from the, the end of my learning friends' uh, uh, submissions. I'll, I'll deal as briefly as I can it's with. Sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Sorry, I don't, don't have to stand up at the end. I, my Leonard Junior's asked me to point out that it's 274 
the new guidance specifically makes clear that this sort of incident would be a matter for the school management team, not for, not for the police. Under example three. Well, we, we'll read it for ourselves. While you're on your feet, Mr. Cottle. We just... should record the incident, it says. Yes, please. Um, just to say that um, rather, than, rather than track changes, or you can do a track changes document, but uh, I, I would like you to produce. Uh, a schedule with identifying the changes, specific changes as well, additions and deletions specifically, as well as a track changes document that would make things easier. I think. Um, the, uh, sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm being told, in fact, although I said track changes, the, the differences in the format of the two documents is such that that would be very difficult. Yes. So we'll we'll present it as comprehensible as you can get. Yes, that's right. thank you. The yes, only other right. point of any difference that mm -hmm. is, is noteworthy that um, we're aware of. Could you bear with me one moment? Okay. Um, as we see at page two five nine. And this is picking up, um, we pick up here, my Lord, um, Lord Justice uh, um, Adam Cave's point about language being important. You'll see that inserted into the new guidance, it wasn't in the guidance before. Note the terms victim and suspect are used throughout the authorised professional guidance practice. Refer the person, to refer the person reporting to, uh, an allegation uh, and the alleged perpetrator. Uh, these terms do not mean that a crime has been reported or that an investigation into a crime has taken place. So victim and suspect are now given um, as official stamp of approval by this guidance. And so uh, when we look at the school children's uh, example, the school child now becomes a, a, a suspect. And presumably that school child, if they were using social media, would also uh, be subject to the same language procedure uh, 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 and, and, and so forth. Um, if we can return to um, Maloney Friend's submissions at the outset, you started off by this, making the surprising submission that paragraph 6.3 of the uh, of the policy we're challenging it, it, it is not an instruction to record well, as uh, the court will immediately notice it is exactly what it uh, uh, says it should do my learned friend says that the instruction to record comes from the uh, national standards for um, uh, the, the national standards that you referred to the curious feature of the, of, of, of the scheme then is, is that there's no reference in the uh, hate crime operational guidance to the, to the national standards. There's no, there's no suggestion that there's somehow one somehow parasitic upon the other, and one has to read the two together. It doesn't say that. There's no, there's no suggestion uh, 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 of that at all. And the theme that ran right through Maloney Friend's uh, submissions uh, was that due to the operation of both of these sets of, 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 of guidance, the HCOG, the hate crime operational guidance actually made no difference and that, that, that was in essence what was being said uh, repeatedly now a lady lady justice similar asked my learned friend both before the lunch break and and, uh, and after how uh, an incident such as the one um, that, that uh, prompted this, the, 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 these, the, these proceedings would be recorded under the um, the, na the, the national standards and my learned friend was unable to answer would it be recorded as a complaint was made or would it be recorded as a hate crime? We're now told, well, they let us know. But we've been right through the High Court proceedings, skeleton arguments, the final afternoon of the second day of the Court of Appeal, and he's still unable to present evidence, which is a central plank of, of, of his case. Because his case, essentially, is none of this matters. We then had uh, submissions earlier uh, uh, b b 
before the adjournment about the very limited circumstances in which the um, enhanced criminal record checks uh, might become uh, important in a case uh, such as this. And there's a couple of points to make on that. The judge below posited the example of Mr Miller applying to work with transgender children as being an obvious example of, of, of where there would be disclosure. He wasn't saying those would be the only circumstances where um, uh, where this uh, police record would be, would, would, would be disclosed. But my learned friend then boulderises that by saying, well, it's only in these very limited circumstances that the, um, that the, the, the record would be disclosed. That's not what the judge below said at all. There's no warrant for the, um, the, 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 that submission. What he went on to say, my learned friend, is that it may or may not be uh, disclosed. Well, there we go. That's the, that's the uncertainty. But for our purposes, it doesn't matter what the precise circumstances are, whether um, an incident such as this, this would be disclosed. The point is the chilling effect of the possibility of disclosure, not just with respect to an individual incident such as the one that gave rise to these proceedings, but in general terms, the chilling effect that if you go on social media or, 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 or express yourself in any other way, in a way that might upset someone, you may well be, uh, may, may well, you, you stand the, the very real possibility of having a police record, uh, a, 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 the police recording, uh, something uh, um, with respect to it. Mm. And one that's notes, what, sorry, one notes from the new guidance, page 274, that example two is where an incident takes place in a, at a party at somebody's home. Yes. Yes. Well, I reiterate the point, my lord, that um, the College of Policing are obviously emboldened by the uh, judgment of the court below. And the, the reach just seems to get greater and uh, greater and greater. They're saying that they've got too many of these incidents, uh, too many of these reports to deal with. The figure of 140,000 comes to mind. I think, I think the people behind me are going to, 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 to try and work out exactly where that figure comes from. But I, I seem to recall having read that 140,000 incidents have been reported to the police, but we must, I must double check that. I, I don't and think, over what period? I'm not sure. And, and, uh, uh, we have and, to be careful. We, we, yeah. What we, what we, we do care. know is that we are told that the volume is such that Absolutely. investigation is yeah. not possible. Yeah. Um, I'm sure I've seen some figures somewhere, my lady, but, and, and, and we'll do our be best to... Well, uh, I don't, I'm not inviting you to put in further evidence <laughs> no, 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 no. in relation to that. And uh, so um, please don't unless it's asked for. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll endeavour to the court. Um, another curious feature of my learned friend's submissions uh, say so, with due respect, is that there's been a significant change in the way that the College of Policing have presented their case, both in the court below and in the written submissions to this court. My learned friend never, uh, uh, didn't recognise that the, uh, uh, what, what happened as, happens as a result of paragraph 3 of the um, Hate Crime Operational Guide is, is a recording. He used the word categorisation repeatedly probably two score times during, uh, during his submissions. And that's clearly a deliberate um, uh, um, decision on the part of the College of Police and its representatives to try to, to, to make the whole, uh, the, the, the whole procedure more palatable. But it isn't a categorisation. Uh, it, 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 it's a recording. Um, that's what it says on the tin, uh, um, Hate Crime Operational Guidance. You must, you, you, you must record. He also goes on to say, well, it's not intended, HCOG isn't intended to be a comprehensive manual, as if somehow uh, that, uh, that absolves the College of Policing of any responsibility for, for any admissions. Well, it, 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 that may well have had some traction, uh, in, in, in earlier um, versions of the, uh, of the guidance, but it certainly can't have any tractions in the, in, in the current uh, version. Uh, version. Um, and and Melanie Friend said on a number of occasions, this is high-level guidance. I'm quite sure what that was supposed to mean. 
But what we do know is that the um, hate crime operational guidance is a manual given to police officers and staff as to how to deal with this kind of situation. That's exactly what the College of Police is, um, is tasked to do. That, uh, and, and it's that guidance, of course, that the uh, officers on the ground rely on when they're, when they're dealing with these uh, complaints. We then move on to deal with, that, that, that was it with that those comments were with respect to the preliminary points that my learning uh, friend uh, made. And we then come on to deal with the issues uh, in the case. And the court will recall that my learning friend paid great, laid the, placed great weight on, on Lord Sumption's judgment in a CAC case about the lawfulness of, re, of, of retaining data. And of course we accept that, and that you'll recall that I made a point, we made a point at the outset of accepting that there is a, co that there is a common law, that power rested with, vested with the police to uh, enable them to uh, collect and, uh, and retain data. Law assumptions is obviously, obviously right. But that doesn't mean that they've got the power to retain any data whatsoever without any constraints at all. Just, just Think about that for, uh, for, for, for one moment. The police wouldn't have the power, for example, uh, or one wouldn't imagine it would at any rate, to um, record information about the political views of individuals, about the sexual orientation of individuals, about intimate details of individuals. No, co the common law power, does, it, it, just because there's a common law power providing that the police can retain information. It doesn't mean they can retain any information about anything. And plainly, Lord Sumption wasn't uh, uh, saying uh, that he was. Plainly relevant, uh, however, to the, to, to the cat case and the kind of factual information that, that the court was concerned with in that case, which is, is, is uh, consistent with the generality of the information that one would anticipate that the police would be... Um, gathering and, uh, 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 and retaining. Um, turning now to the, the, the particular grounds, I don't intend to say anything more about ground one. As we identified yesterday, it adds nothing to the Article 10 uh, challenge. Um, some courts prefer to go down a common law route, some courts prefer to go down a, a, a convention route. We're, we've developed the arguments more along the lines of the convention route. With respect to ground two, it's very surprising that my learned friend completely mischaracterised our case. What he said, it was the rationality of perception-based recording. Well, that wasn't our case at all. Our case, if uh, the, the court will recall, was the rationality, um, the rationality of recording hate incidents regardless of whether there's any evidence of hate. So, not surprisingly, my learned friend didn't address that uh, or, uh, 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 at all, merely merely changing the uh, the, the question that the, uh, the, the that has to be answered uh, doesn't absolve any responsibility from uh, an, a, a answering the question uh, in in the, in the first place. So we don't um, we, we we don't have the benefit of any submissions uh, on 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 that particular submission. But whilst uh, my learning friend was making those submissions, um, my lady, Lady Justice Simler, asked, the, asked my learning friend the question about the um, about the distinction between racist incidents and, 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 uh, and other incidents. And I, I, I apprehend my lady had in mind Kathleen Stock's second witness statement, where she sets out, and I'd invite the court to read this more generally, where she sets out how behaviour and language can uh, o o operate very differently philosophy professor, one would expect that this, this, this sort of rigour, uh, can behave very differently in different contexts. Put very short, I'm not going to take the court to it at the moment, but put very shortly, what she said with respect to racist comments is, it, it, is you can generally identify it pretty clearly uh, where, uh, if we have uh, racist uh, comments. Whereas, contrast that with transphobic comments, um, there's a very great difference of opinion, and indeed a large proportion of the population, we don't know what, 
wouldn't even recognise the transgender debate. Whether a man or she, she uses the analogy of a, of a, of a post box, if I recall correctly, and she says that very many people would think well, the question of whether a, a person is a man or a woman is as straightforward as whether letterboxes are red. Um, and that's the way, for, for right or wrong, that's the way a lot of people would, would, would perceive it. So language is much more difficult in this area. I think that's one thing uh, 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 we, we, we can all agree on. Whereas uh, the racist uh, language is, is, is hateful and abusive racist language is much, much more immediately apparent, is, 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 the, is, is the gist of what she said. I'd invite the court to, to, to carefully look at those. That's actually a short statement, the second statement in, 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 in the papers. Um, but because, and, the, and the point's important because the, the genesis of this guidance is the Stephen Lawrence inquiry, as we've seen. And some international materials um, about combating uh, uh, racial abuse and and and, uh, uh, and, and, and hatred, uh, none of which we seek to uh, in, in any in, in in any way undermine. But as we said at the outset, in, in in opening, Sir William McPherson didn't say that all these um, in, or, or even racist incidents shouldn't just be recorded willy-nilly without, uh, 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 without, without any investigation. He said they should be investigated in just the same way uh, 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 as racist crimes. So the whole concept has been boulderized without the uh, element of fairness that was implicit in what uh, was uh, set out in the, um, what was recommended in the, in, in, in the Lawrence inquiry. The learned friend then went on to um, to say, finally, on rationality, the guidance uh, was held by the judge not to exclude normal rationality constraints. So Malone Friend um, developed this concept of rationality constraints. And I can only presume that what he means there is, is, is the judge below's acceptance of what Mr. Williams said about police officers using their common sense when they're recording these um, um, complaints. Well, number one, there's a, there's, a, there's a difference between common sense and, ra and, uh, and rationality. And, the, and, and the, the point being, when uh, uh, we made absolutely clear in opening, one person's common sense uh, is the uh, same as another person's common sense. Now, you could say that about rationality, but rationality is a much higher threshold. As lawyers, we commonly think of the red-headed teacher example in, 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 in Wentry. But for something to be unreason uh, 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 irrational is a very high threshold. As a matter of common sense, um, people would, 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 would take very di uh, different views. So my learned friend would say it's quite wrong to say uh, that um, there's rationality constraints with, uh, within the scheme. And the point is that there isn't, that there isn't any rationality constraints in the scheme. We, we say that the... Um, uh, the, the, the judge below was completely wrong to, 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 to accept without any further evidence what Mr. Williams said uh, in, in his statement. And if, uh, and if there was any doubt about that, one just asks the rhetorical question, well, why wasn't, why wasn't that put in form in the new, in the new guidance? If that, if that is an important part of the, uh, of the structure of this in, 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 in the framework, but it should be there in, 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 in the structure. Police officers should know. And moreover, the, 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 the general public uh, should know. But on this ground of challenge, the, the, the second ground of challenge, my, my friend um, doesn't even begin to address the, 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 the questions that are, 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 are positive on, on our part. We then move into the uh, Article 10 territory and, 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 and deal with uh, in, interference. And the main point that my learned friend made, he, and this straddles the adjournment, he made it just before and just after the adjournment, but there's no, there's, there's, there's no case law to support our case on, on, on interference. Well, there'll never be a case exactly on all fours. All, all, all four. That's the nature of, of, of um, the, 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 the process, certainly not at the, at the higher courts. But there are analogous cases. We see, we, we, considering here uh, interference, in CAT, um, the recording of, of factual information was held to be an interference with the Article 8 rights. By analogy, one must 
uh, 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 see the force of that in, the, in, in respect of, of Article 10 rights. And of course, in the Turkish case, at, at, at Akram, um, the, the, the court was, see, was, was shown how uh, the European Court dealt with um, in, in, in interference there. The Learned Friend didn't take the court to uh, the Turkish case on, on, on interference. Uh, but, but of course, uh, we, we heavily uh, rely upon it. On interference, uh, one of the submissions my Learned Friend made made was the, the, the guidance is about recognising what would be in any event recorded as a, as a hate incident. Um, I think I've, I've quoted my learned friend correctly there. Again, this is this uh, point about that, that he makes continually um, about the, the recording that would take place under, un, under the national standards without having any evidence or being able to, to show the court or, 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 or anybody else what actually would be recorded under the national uh, under, the, under the national standards, and just pausing there, uh, then, m um, my Lord, uh, Lord Justice uh, Haddon Cave noted that in the national standards, the, we, we see the same lang la language replicated, that, uh, that the offending language in paragraph six point three of the the opera uh, operational guidance. Um, it, it's unclear how that's uh, um, operated, but the truth is that if, if, if the language of, of paragraph 6.3 is found, is found to be unlawful and offensive, then that, that, that would almost certainly uh, read, be, be read over into the, um, the National Standards for inf in, in Information uh, Recording. That it really doesn't take them anywhere. It's a, it's a form over substance point, if, the, if there's anything in it in, in, in any event. After the adjournment, my learning friend is still on, on, on interference. My learning friend, it's difficult to see how categorisation could stigmatise anyone. Again, again we, we, we underplay the, the, the impact of what's going on here by, by, by a, 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 a change in the language, categorisation again, and stigmatise. But of course, the judge made the finding um, that, that we saw with respect to the police um, that's uh, that's repeated at paragraph 257 of the, uh, of the judgment. It's, it's at paragraph 40 of my client's witness statement about the sense of both personal humiliation, shame for the family, embarrassment for his company, uh, and, 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 and anxiety and so on, which the judge said would be the reaction of anybody who'd been exercising their free expressive uh, rights and received a visit from the police as a consequence. But of course, as we identified yesterday, that paragraph was said in the context of the record, not the um, the visit from from, uh, from from the police. So the first half of paragraph 258 um, carries just as much weight regardless of the, the, the second half. What uh, we see there, paragraph 40 of, of, of Mr Miller's statement, is, as the judge found, uh, the, the reaction of, of anybody exercising their, their free expect. Uh, free expressive rights. Um, that's a matter of common sense, uh, uh, we would say, to um, use the uh, uh, respondent's language. So, although, when Mr. I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but if, if there had been a mere recording without any follow up by the police, Mr. Miller would never have known about that entry. Well, he case. may never have known. He, 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 so, he, he well, may what, what I'm put, I'm so sorry, what I'm putting to you is that although he's complaining about recording, he, he's inevitably he must be identifying his response to being told that there well, was a recording uh, uh, and being yeah. talked uh, uh, to uh, by absolutely the police. Absolutely, Milady. What I was drawing the distinction was was the knock on the door by PC Goal and the questions and you, you've seen the yeah. evidence about what was said in the exchanges and, 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 and so on that. And that was what the judge below found to be uh, beyond the pale. Uh, 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 frankly, it wasn't. It wasn't just being told that there was the recording. It was. Uh, it was uh, the, the, the 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 officer's actions. But my lady's point is that if there had been no knock on the door, he would never have known. May well not have known. That, that so how does that leave because your he, argument? Because he may well uh, he, he may well become aware that uh, in in. Um, the, the world of uh, of social controversy, 
that the police are, 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 are becoming um, uh, involved in these cases. Just in the same way that um, Mr Miller's wider family got to know about this as a result of, of what happened to him, then there will inevitably be other families who, who, who get to know. And generally, the, the, uh, the, the message will get out there amongst people on social media. It's, it, it, it's inevitable. To read, read the Miller case and the, and the reports? No. The, the, those on social media, and that doesn't include me, I hasten to add, um, w w will be told about what's going on. It, it, it's inevitably, in, inevitably, it'll be a very abridged version as well, of, co uh, uh, of course. But the point, the very short point is, there becomes a more, that the, there will quickly become a general awareness that the police are collating all this information. And that's the point I think my lady made yesterday about the chilling effect gen uh, amongst, the, uh, amongst the general public. I mean, one could just do, uh, uh, posit the question, just returning to my, uh, my, my Lord's question, we've now got this um, guidance with respect to um, children and what have you. What, 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 one doesn't have to um, think very very hard to imagine how quickly round the playground and, and round the school it would get if uh, questions were asked about um, the, the, the sort of example that's in the, in, 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 in the guides or, or, or a multitude of others. But it's no, it, it, it's no, so it's, it, it's no defence to say, uh, well, we're doing it and um, we won't tell anybody and um, we, we'll collate all this information anyway. That's, um, uh, uh, that, that is offensive on, uh, and uh, contrary to Article 10 itself in any event. But that's not the policy. The policy isn't to do secret. Um, my learning friend then um, then th then said there was no wider evidence about the chilling effect. And he picked up with respect to Kathleen Stock, Professor Stock's evidence. There's also, of course, Jody Ginsburg's uh, evidence, the Chief Executive Officer, as she, as she then was, of Index on, on, on Censorship. And she does give some um, actual examples of police involvement in social, uh, so, social media. So that then is, is interference. And, and, and surprisingly, no, no mention in, 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 in Maloney Friend's submissions uh, about the, uh, the case law that refers to the very low... Um, standard that, that, that's required in the particular um, place that freedom of expression has in, in, in the uh, convention juris, jurisprudence. We then move to the submissions on prescribed by law, and this was, um, it was surprising, um, to say the least, that Maloney Friend never used the word foreseeable once in all these submissions on, on prescribed by law. Again, that was obviously a deliberate choice on the part of the College of Police and their, uh, and their representatives, because foreseeable is, is of course, the language used, used in, the, uh, in, in the cases. It's the standard test for, uh, uh, for these purposes. And that then gives rise, and, and the words used in, for, for, for good reason, because it gives rise to the question, could a person foresee the consequences? Now, the question was uh, the consequences of their actions. The question, the rhetorical question that was, was, was put yesterday uh, was how on earth could somebody like Mr Miller or anybody else in, 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 in his position foresee the reactions of somebody like Mrs B acting on the outer, outer limits of rationality or whatever the uh, phrase was that Judge Miller, Miller, Miller said. Um, and that's simply not addressed by, uh, uh, by the other side. They simply don't address that question. And they don't do for good reason. There is no answer. There is no logical answer um, that, that could be given to um, uh, 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 as to how anybody could um, foresee the reaction of, of, of an irrational person. It, 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 it's, it, it's an oxymoron. It, it just simply doesn't make sense. Um, the learned friend, rather than rely on, on, on foreseeability, the correct test, um, drew on one paragraph in, in the Bridges case about the principle of relativity. But that's a secondary question. The 
primary question is the, is the foreseeability question, and, and as you say, doesn't even begin to uh, uh, address it. Um, and, that, uh, and that, of course, is a key question. Poss possibly, ultimately, the key question, in, in, in fact, when you, you boil, uh, when, when this case is, is, is boiled down. We then move to um, proportionality and what the learned friend had to say uh, about that. Um, again, um, he reiterated his point about uh, lack of, of, of impact. We reiterate our point in response to paragraph 40 of, of Mr. Miller's statement, the, the point we made about, about, uh, about in, in interference. Um, And uh, my learning friend, in, in, uh, su surprisingly in his submissions on proportionality, entirely ignored uh, our submissions about the, the, the special protections provided for uh, political and controversial debate. It was, it's paragraph 50B of our, of, of our skeleton argument, which, as, w as we know, uh, requires a ve very uh, compelling reasons indeed to curtail. We're not considering here uh, uh, rationality in a, in, in a um, in an academic sense. This 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 this, this is the, the, this debate on social media is, is the new lifeblood of democracy, and, and and there needs to be extremely compelling reasons to uh, uh, curtail it. Finally, my learned friend um, addressed the court on, on, on safeguards, um, made the point that if you don't know there's no need to safeguard, well, 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 well that, um, I'm afraid, doesn't take my learned friend far because it ignores the chilling effect of the, the, the policy uh, 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 generally. And then we came to the, the, the point he made about the new um, the fact that the College of Policing had, had concerns about how Humberside acted, which is a surprising submission given that they full heartedly supported Humberside's actions in, 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 in the High Court. And they weren't neutral um, or lukewarm, they were, they, they were, they were fully supportive. Uh, so, much, uh, so, so, uh, so, so considerable were the concerns, my learned friend says, was that they changed the guidance to deal with problems. But um, We've seen no, no uh, then my learned friend went on to, uh, to point the court to a number of provisions in the guidance which just replicate the previous guidance. That doesn't really support the submission that the guidance changed to deal with the problems that this case uh, gave, uh, gave rise to. And as I said at the outset of my uh, submissions, what they've done is to embolden the, the, the guidance to make it um, more expansive uh, uh, rather than uh, less so. Um, which will have a greater impact on freedom of speech generally than, uh, uh, than, it, than, than it has before. I think I've dealt with all the uh, points that I don't know if there's any other points I can assist the court with. Oh, well, uh, 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 Arlene Jr. Re 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 reminds me uh, the point about not knowing about the case, but of course, in this case, not only, not, not only uh, did the operational police um, take the action that they did, but the assistant chief constable posted a statement in, in the papers saying that, uh, that, that it was correct to make the record in, uh, in, in, in Mr. Miller's case. After, um, the, so after the litigation? No, uh, at the time, ju just before the pre-action uh, le letters, but it just shows the, the level of support that was given. So if, if, if it was, it was concerned that this is a road case that's got, that, that something's gone wrong, one would expect it to be looked at again um, uh, and it be identified, whoa, uh, this is, we, we, we need to, uh, to, 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 to remedy the, this and put it right. That wasn't the case at all right up through the ranks of the, of, of, of the police that it was supported and as it, uh, uh, the, the office of the actions of Humberside was supported as it was with the, um, the, the, the College of Policing. So that
that indicates that this is uh, what happened in Mr. Miller's case is consistent with the, uh, the police generally's uh, approach to non-crime, the recording of non-crime hate incidents or the complaints about um, uh, non-crime ha ha hate incidents and, uh, and, and exacerbates the concerns about the uncritical recording uh, of such complaints as being non-crime non hate incidents. I don't think I have any other submissions unless you've got any questions. Thank you, Mr. Lord. Fair enough. Well, thank you very much. Can I thank uh, Council on both sides and those behind them for the hard work that's gone into preparing this case for us. It won't surprise you to know we're not going to give judgment immediately. We will uh, consider our judgments and drafts will be circulated to the parties in the normal way for the correction of any uh, spelling and other obvious factual errors, but obviously not for re-argument. If you do want assistance on any particular point, uh, the parties will be uh, told. Uh, the judgment will be handed down. Uh, it may be remotely, it may be in person, depending on where we've got to by then. Uh, and there will be no need for the parties to attend. Uh, we would invite the parties, if they can do so, to endeavour to agree uh, a draft order for the court's approval before the hand down. Uh, again, if there are any matters which need to be dealt with in consequence of the decision that we arrive at, uh, then those uh, can be dealt with in a writing. But again, we will invite submissions uh, if um, uh, we consider we need them. And I reiterate my thanks to all concerned. So unless there's anything else, uh, we'll rise now. Thank you very much.